This billboard made headlines recently when it appeared in a number of Canadian cities. It's another strong cessationist publicity stunt by one of the founders of a party raising eyebrows across the country, the Wexit Party. Co-founder of the party, Peter Downing, has recently started the Alberta U.S. Foundation with the aim of making Alberta the 51st state in the United States of America. Cessation movements are nothing new to Canada. The idea of unifying Canada, or parts of Canada, with the U.S. started before Canada even gained its name, and long before the U.S. was a global superpower. But the reasons behind, methods for, and likelihood of separatist movements have changed drastically. So why is there a resurgence of them now? How far does this desire to join the USA go back? And more importantly, could it actually happen? The proposed billboards were made by Peter Downing and the Alberta US Foundation. As a co-founder of Wexit, he is at the forefront of a Canadian political phenomenon called Western alienation. The Prairie Province's natural gas and oil sector has been a source of tremendous wealth and the backbone of the Canadian have and have not federal aid system, most notably during the recovery from the 2008 financial crisis. Canada's equalization payments policy sets out a system of have and have not provinces, whereby richer provinces pay excess amounts to the federal government in order to equalize federal funding across all the provinces. But since 1957, in its inception, Alberta has received less than 0.02% of all of this funding. And yet, in 2017, Alberta had a $27 billion net outflow to the federal government. In light of the federal government's new carbon reduction policies involving carbon taxes and the anti-pipeline movement, the western provinces have felt directly targeted, most negatively impacted and abandoned now that the oil sector is struggling and plunging Alberta into a recession. This belief that the Canadian government cares little for the Albertan economy and far more about benefiting Ontario and Quebec was also the source for the 1980s Saskatchewan secession movement led by the Unionist Party it sought to join the United States. The Alberta U.S. Foundation is part of a long line of previous provincial or geographical independence movements. There has been the Western independence movements which encompass Saskatchewan and Alberta, the Cascadian movement which sought the creation of a new country with BC and Western seaboard U.S. states, the Acadian movement for the Maritimes, and most famously of all, the Quebec Sovereignty Movement. What's interesting is that early in our history, the U.S. wanted Canadian provinces to join their union. In 1774, as a part of the American Revolution between the U.S. and the British Empire, the American colonies invaded Canada. Although the invasion eventually failed, culminating in the Battle of Quebec City, it clearly outlined their ideal of manifest destiny, the desire to one day unite all of North America. In the early days of the United States, many political figures favored invading and annexing Canada, and even pre-approved Canada's admission into the United States in the Articles of Confederation in 1777. Saying this though, we can't take at face value the desires of the United States from almost 200 years ago, and possibly the biggest barrier to this would be the United States' willingness to sour relationships with its oldest and closest ally by essentially annexing part of its territory. Furthermore, Alberta, or any province for that matter, would have to separate from Canada first. This would be a difficult process, but not one that's unprecedented. Mes amis, c'est raté, mais pas de beaucoup. No, 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 pissé, pissé. As all Canadians know, Quebec has had a separatist movement since Confederation, and have had two official referendums in 1995 and 1980. Although these two referenda failed to reach a clear majority of support for cessation, it outlines a plan for Alberta to follow if they truly intend to separate. As with the Quebec referendum, the motion would have to come from their provincial government to hold a referendum on the question of sovereignty, meaning that the Wexit party would have to gain control of the provincial parliament by winning a majority in order to do so. The question that the province would vote on would also have to fit within a single sentence. Although the Quebec referendums have historically circumvented this with semicolons, this was the one-sentence question on the Quebec 1980 referendum. But even if the referendum vote were met with a resounding yes from the Albertans, 
there's still the question of whether this would all be legal. In 1995, after the second Quebec referendum vote, the Supreme Court of Canada ruled that the unilateral secession discussed in the referendum made it illegal. After the decision, the federal government of the time passed the Clarity Act, which stated that any future referendum would have to be on a clear question, and that it would have to represent the vaguely phrased clear majority for the federal parliament to recognize its validity. Even if Alberta were to overcome these obstacles, having a Wexit-led government, phrasing their referendum question legally, and gaining a clear majority, joining the United States would be another ordeal altogether. And the United States has shown almost no interest in accepting them into their union. Puerto Rico has been a territory of the United States since 1917, but has never been formally included into the United States. Puerto Ricans may have their US citizenship and free trade, but they don't have a single representative in the Congress, or any say in their presidential elections, and it's been that way for over a century. Not to mention the fact that popular support for Wexit is extremely low, even by Wexit-run polls. Only 20% said that the new party was a good idea, while 54% said it was terrible. If Alberta truly wants to secede and disprove accusations that they're only using the threat of separation as political leverage, popular support will have to grow immensely. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want us to make similar content in the future, please leave a like and consider subscribing. If you have any ideas for next week's video, please leave a comment and we'll be sure to check it out. We really appreciate any and all support as we continue to grow our channel and try to make the content that you enjoy.